Hi everybody, this is Crystal. So today I'm going to show you how to make this really nice washcloth set. I mean, they they turned out really nice. I mean, it would uh, not it's going to be it could be a nice gift for anybody. I mean, I would love to receive this. Um there's three washcloths in there and of course you can put more if you want and they're tied with the ribbon. But I'll go ahead and untie them so I can show you what they look like here. I'll retie that later. But when you open them up, Look how nice they are. They're nice. They got that nice ridges on them. Bumpy on this side. Nice clean edges. And they are just plain flat on the bottom. Now these are approximately 13 inches by 13 inches. And you can always make yours bigger or smaller if you'd like. But that's what size mine turned out to be. So I'm going to go ahead and set this to the side. And I'll show you what I used. Um, what I used was peaches and cream. It's a 100% cotton uh, four ply yarn, medium weight. Now you don't have to use this brand, but you uh, highly, highly recommend cotton. You do not want to use acrylic for washcloths or dish rags. It's just not going to work out for you very well. I mean, cotton's what you want to use. Um, and there. There are, let's see how many yards we got here, 120 yards in each one of these skeins. And I used about a skein and a half per cloth. So about 180 yards per washcloth. So it took me about one full skein and this is what I got left of the second. So it's about half. And the colors that I chose were bright blue, sunshine and then I have dark taupe but of course you use any colors that you like there are tons of colors of cotton now for the ribbon I chose a dark brown ribbon and again any kind you want this is um a satin ribbon and it is 5 8 inch and it probably took me about uh, five feet to wrap up my dishcloths. Five feet per per set. I'm gonna make more sets. This is just my first set, but but yeah, see they turned out really nice. And then I'm gonna be using a size I, which is a five and a half millimeter crochet hook. So let's go ahead and get started on it. Okay, for my size, mine, like I said, were uh, about about 13 by 13. Now, you can make yours bigger or smaller. This stitch is done in a multiple of two. So, if you want to make yours smaller than mine, or you want to make a big bath towel, or you want to use the stitch for something else, it just needs to be done in a multiple of two, and it's a really easy stitch. So, I'm going to do mine on a smaller scale because I already got uh, my big piece done. But what you want to do is start with a chain of 44 from my size. And once you get your chain of 44 made, we're going to put one single crochet in the second stitch from the hook. And then we're going to put one single crochet in every stitch for the length of your chain. Okay, once you, once you make it to end of row one, you should have a total of 43 stitches. Okay, now for row two, we're going to chain one, and we're going to turn our work. Now what we're going to do is put one single crochet, this is starting row two, one single crochet into that very, very first stitch. Like that. And then we're going to triple crochet into the next stitch. So we triple, that's where we yarn over twice. Go into the next stitch and do our triple crochet. And then we're going to single crochet into the next. And then we're going to triple crochet into the next. And single into the next. And we're just going to repeat this to the end of the row. Triple crochet. And 
and single crochet. And if you flip it over, you'll be able to see that the triple ship, triple, triple crochets are kind of popping out a little bit. And that's what gives it that little bit of a bobble look. So we triple crochet into the next. And then single crochet. So triple crochet, single crochet, triple crochet, single crochet, all the way until you get to the end of row two. And when you get to the end of row two, you still should have 43 stitches. Okay, I'm coming to the end of row two, and your last stitch should be a single crochet. So go ahead and single crochet that. 43 stitches at the end of row two. So for row three, we're going to chain one and turn our work. We're going to single crochet again right into the very, very first stitch. And now we're just going to put one single crochet in every single stitch to the end of the row. So row, this row three is just a row single crochet. And when you get to the end, you still should have 43 stitches. Okay, I made it to the end of row three, and you'll have 43 stitches. Remember, I did mine a little smaller, but you can see your stitches poofing out a little bit. And you'll see that more the more rows you do. But now it's just a repeat of rows two and three. That's all it is. It's just an easy two row, re two row repeat. So you just chain one and turn your work. Start off with one single crochet into that very first stitch. And then triple crochet into the next. Single crochet into the next. And then triple crochet into the next. Single crochet. And then triple crochet. You do that all the way to the end. And you'll, you'll, ha you'll still have 43 stitches. Okay, I'm coming to the end and I should be ending in a single crochet and that's it now I'm just gonna repeat row three by chaining one and turning single crochet into that very first stitch and one single crochet in every stitch across so I'm just gonna keep repeating rows two and three and at the end of each row, I should always have 43 stitches. That, that stitch count doesn't change. So keep repeating rows 2 and 3 until you reach a total of 35 rows. Okay, once you get done with your 35th row, and it should be a single crochet row, should be your last row. We're not going to tie off. What we're going to do is go around the whole piece with single crochet and clean up all the edges. So after that 35th row, I'm just going to chain one, and now I'm going to start working down the side of the dishcloth. So I'm just going to kind of go in. And just kind of evenly space out these single crochets. If you look, you can kind of see where they're, they're where they need to go at the end of each row. I mean, it's kind of hard to tell, but you can do your best here. Kind of like right here in this gap, I'll put one, and then a the little gap here, and then this bigger gap, and then a the little gap next to it. And I'm going to do this all the way down this first side here. And what this is going to do is clean up the edges. Make them look real nice and neat. Got to have neat edges. Don't want them looking all raggedy. Especially if it's for a gift. So I'm going to work all the way down this side here. See how much nicer that looks until I get over here, down here to the bottom. 
Okay, when you make it down here to your first corner right here, this is kind of where we started. I'm going to put three single crochets right there into that stitch. And what that's going to do is help around the corner out. So just go ahead and put three right in there into that corner stitch. It's going to help it lay flat and it's going to make it look a lot nicer. Now I'm going to try to hide this beginning tail as I go. And now I'm going to work my way across the other side here putting one single crochet in every stitch. And you'll probably be able to see the single crochets where they're supposed to go a lot better here on this, this bottom part. So one single now in every stitch on the, across the bottom here until you get to your next corner. Just like that. Now when you look at it, you can see how much nicer that looks compared to it being just plain over here. So I'm going to continue working one single crochet across here. And when I get to this corner, I'll put three single crochets in it. And then I'll continue working up this side. And this side is where you can, it's kind of hard to see where I put single crochets. But it's just like over here. Just do the best you can to kind of evenly space them out. And then I'm going to put three single crochets in this corner. And then we'll be right up here at the top. And then we're going to put one single crochet all the way right, all, all the way across the top until we get back to where we started. And I'll meet you right here where we started. Okay, once you make it back all the way back around to the beginning and you get to your very last stitch right here, you want to put three single crochets into that very last stitch. That way we have three in every corner. And then what we're going to do is there's this chain one here that we made. We don't want to, we want to skip that and slip stitch into this very first single crochet that we did right here on the side. So not this chain one. It looks like a stitch. We're not going to do nothing with that. We're going to slip stitch right here into this first single crochet that we made. Like that. And now you want to tie off, clip that yarn. Now the number of stitches you have around right now isn't really important because it could be different if you counted wrong, you know, you didn't space these out quite the same as me on the size. Now as long as it's laying flat and it looks nice and straight, that's all that matters. And then you got a nice washcloth. So now what we're going to do is hide this tail real quick. So I'm going to get my yarn needle. And I'm going to go hide it from the back here. Kind of just weave it in. Weave it in quite a few times so it doesn't um, come undone. I always find it's hard to weave tails on cotton. That's why I got this big old needle here, or this big old yarn hook here. It's easier with a big one, I think. Okay, once you get it weaved in there good enough and you think that's Probably not going to come undone. Go ahead and clip that tail off. And then any other tails you got remaining, you want to go ahead and hide them. And then I put in the three in my set, so that's what it looks like here. Just like that. So I'm going to grab my other three in my ribbon. And we're going to fold them up get them all the same size so just kind of lay them out so 
so we can make sure they're all about the same size. Sometimes you might need to stretch one a bit. So yeah, they're all looking good. So what we're going to do is just fold them up nice and neat. We're going to tie a ribbon around them. Make sure you ain't got no loose tails. I do. Got to clip that one. Okay. So lay it backside facing you, and we're just going to fold it nice and neatly like you would any old wash rag, you know, like you're folding laundry, I guess. Make sure all the corners line up good. If you're giving it as a nice gift, you want it to look really nice. And these are actually for my sister in law asked me to make these. She's going to give them away to some people that she works with, I guess. So I'm going to make them look nice and neat for her. That's usually the only time I make stuff for people. It's just my family. If they ask me to. Otherwise, I'm pretty... Pretty well just make stuff for my YouTube channel. And then I'm going to stack it on top of this one. The same way. Go in the same direction. And I'll do my last one here. on same direction now I'm going to take my ribbon whatever color you chose to go with whatever color yarns you're using I'm going to tie them up so pull it out put you want to put it the shiny side facing you I'll put it on top like I guess you can't see that. Let me raise up my camera here. Sorry about that. Okay, so you just want to put it... These are thick wash rags or a dishcloth, so... You just want to put it on top like that. And then flip it. Try to keep them nice and then... Leave yourself a lot of length on that side. And then... Twist it. Like this. Right in the center, the best you can. Keeping the shiny side up still if you can. And then we'll flip it back around. And then we'll tie a bow. And I, I left lots of, lots of length on that other side so I could tie a bow there. So I'm going to go ahead and clip my, yarn, clip my ribbon off there so I can tie a bow. So now I'm just going to take it. I'm not very good at tying bows, so... <laughs> <laughs> at all but you get you'll get the idea just tie a nice bow there the best that you can and then you just cut your ribbon off I'll fix that bow it don't work that great but that you get the idea and you just do that and then you can cut your, the ends off however short you want them to be. I cut mine at an angle like that. But that's it. That's all there is to it. And that's a really nice gift, I think. You can turn it over and you need to straighten out the ribbon there. But that's how it's done. I think it looks good. Turned out nice. So also, don't forget to check me out on Instagram. And um, I'll have the link to the written pattern below for this also. And until next time, have a good day. And don't forget to subscribe to Bago Day Crochet. You can subscribe by clicking this red button right here. And don't forget to click this little bell right there next to it. That way you'll always be notified whenever Bago Day puts on a new video. Hi everybody, this is Crystal. So today I'm going to show you how to make this wash rag here that you can use for dishes or 
um, whatever you want to use it for. Wipe off your tables, uh, I don't know, shower with, whatever. You can make it longer, I guess. Make it a dish towel. But we'll go ahead and do the measurements of it. It is approximately 13 and a half by about 11. Of course, you can make it taller if you want to or shorter. Okay, um, I consider this probably an intermediate stitch. It's not hard as long as you know how to do front, uh, post stitches. It's mainly just double crochet, single crochet, and front post um, double crochets. It This is called the... Um, uh, ripple stitch the raised ripple or some people call it the alpine stitch it's done in um any number of stitches that are odd an odd number so you can adjust your chain length to the size of a wash rag or if you want to make it a dish towel or whatever that you want so uh, let's go ahead and get started on this okay for this project i am using a hobby lobby i love this cotton it is a 100% cotton yarn. There's 180 yards per skein. And I went through. This is all I have left of one skein. So you're going to need about 175 yards of yarn. Especially, and if you want to make it any bigger than mine, you're going to need more. The color I'm using is called Antique Gold. Now, you do not have to use this yarn. This is a medium weight number four. Now, you don't have to use this yarn. Any medium weight four yarn will work, but might I recommend if you're using it for a kitchen, like where it's going to be wet, as such as washing dishes, drying dishes, um, I would recommend using nothing less than at least an 85% cotton. That's just my recommendation. Of course, you can use acrylic. It'll still look the same. It just won't be as absorbent as um, cotton would. And then I'm going to be using a size H, which is a 5 millimeter crochet hook. Okay. As I said in the beginning, this stitch can be worked in any uh, number of chains that are odd. But... If you want to follow along with me, you want to start out with a chain of 51. Now, I'm going to show you on a smaller scale since I already have my big piece done. But once you get your chain of 51 done, we're going to go ahead and do a double crochet in the fourth stitch from the hook. And remember, we never count the one that's on our hook. So go ahead and double crochet in the fourth stitch from the hook. And then we're going to put one double crochet in every stitch for the length of the chain. Just like this. So row one is one double crochet in every stitch until you get to the end of the row. All right, once you make it to the end of row one, you should have a total of 49 stitches. Now, you should always have a total of 49 stitches for the rest of the pattern. Rows two through five are the repeat rows too for the rest of the pattern so two three four and five are the repeat rows it's a four row repeat so we're going to start row two by chaining one and turning our work what we're going to do is go right into that very very first stitch and we're going to put a single crochet and then we're going to work one single crochet in every stitch across until we get to the end of the row like that. So row two is this one single crochet in every stitch. All right I'm coming to the end of row two here and your last stitch here will go into the top of this little chain here. He counts as a stitch so and now at the end of row two you should still have a total of 49 stitches. Row three we are going to chain one and turn our work. So we're going to start off by putting a double crochet right there into that very first stitch. And now we're going to work a front post double crochet down here into the next stitch, but not the single crochet row all the way down here on this double crochet row. Okay, so we're going to yarn over and we're going to go double crochet, front post double crochet 
around this double crochet here. Not this very first one, but the next one. So go around the post a bit like that to where your post is on the front of your hook. And we're going to double crochet, but you don't want to do it real tight. You want to pull up just a little bit like that. And then go ahead and do your double crochet. Like that. And now we're going to put a double crochet into the next stitch. Just right into the top of the next stitch. And then we're going to do a front post double crochet again. Down there around the post of the next stitch. So we don't do this one right here. Because we worked at this double crochet for that stitch. So we'll go around the post of the next one. Which is right here. So we yarn over, go around the stitch right here, around the post of it like that, and then you do your double crochet, but like I said, don't do it real tight. Pull it up kind of loose like that, and then go ahead and do your double crochet. Just like that. Now we're going to do a double crochet into the top of the next stitch. And then we'll front post double crochet around the next down here. So it's not going to be this one. It's going to be the next one. So we yarn over. Go around the post of the next stitch. And do your double front post double crochet kind of loosely. Pull it up a little bit. And then do your double crochet. And that's what we're going to kind of repeat until we get to the end of the row. Double crochet into the top of the next. And then a front post double crochet into the next, which is not going to be this one. It's going to be the next one. Double crochet into the top of the next. And then a front post double into the next. So not this one down here, but it's going to be the next one. Always do remember not to do the front post double too tight. Pull up a little bit on it. And we're going to repeat this pattern until we get to the end of the row. And that's what it kind of looks like. All right, I'm coming to the end. And I did my last front post uh, double crochet there. And then I'm going to go ahead and end by double crocheting into the last stitch. And again, you still, you still should have 49 stitches. So row of four, we will chain one and turn. And we're just going to repeat what we did on row two. And that was one single crochet into the very first stitch. And then one single crochet in every stitch across until you get to the end of the row. So row four is just a row of single crochet. One single crochet in every stitch. Just like that. Okay, I've made it to the end of row four. You still should have your 49 stitches. What I'm going to do is chain one and turn my work. So what we need to do is we need to get where the post stitches are caddy cornered from each other. So how we achieve that is row five. We're going to put a double crochet into the very first stitch. And then a double crochet into the next stitch. And now we will start doing our post stitch. So we're going to go ahead and do a front post double crochet around the next stitch, which is this one right here. You see these post stitches here? We need to work it between them. So go ahead and yarn over and go into that post stitch or go into this double crochet that's in between the post stitches and do your front post double. Remember not to make it too tight. Pull up a bit and then double. And then we do a double crochet into the top of the next stitch. And then we front post double into the next down here in between these two post stitches we will front post double into that one by doing this we're making the post stitches caddy cornered from each other like that so again we'll go ahead and put a double crochet into the top of the next stitch 
And then we'll work our front post double crochet down here into the next stitch. So it's not this post stitch. It's the one in between these two posts. So go right around the post of it, way down here, and do your front post double crochet. Pull up. And then double crochet into the top of the next. And we're just going to keep repeating this pattern until we get to the end of the row. Front post double crochet into the next. It's the one in between these post stitches. And then it's one double crochet into the top of the next. So just keep repeating this pattern until you get to the end of uh, row five. Okay, I'm coming to the end of row five and I just did a front post double crochet and I have two stitches left. I wanna go ahead and just put a double crochet into the last two stitches. Because we started out row five by putting a double crochet into the first two, we're gonna end it by putting double crochet into the last two. And that's what it looks like there. Now you can see that the stitches, the post stitches are catty cornered from each other. So now it's just a repeat of rows two, three, four, and five. So we just completed row five. We'll, we will chain one and turn our work and we'll do single crochet rows all the way across for row six. Then row seven will be post stitch rows again. Always keeping your post stitches catty cornered from each other. See that? They're just opposite each other. And that's what gives it the ripple effect. And you just want to repeat rows two through five until you get a total of 36 rows if you're following me. You can make it bigger than that, but you will need more yarn than what I said in the beginning. So repeat rows two through five until you hit a total of 36 rows. Okay, now once you get your 36 rows done, now remember if you want to do it bigger, you can. I just um, stopped here so I only so one skein of yarn would be enough because I think if I went any further, I would have to break into another skein. But I got my 36 rows done. Don't tie off. What I'm going to do now is go around the whole entire piece with single crochet to clean up all the edges. So I just ended in my 36th row. Um, it's the row of double crochets in um, front post double crochets. So I'm going to chain one and I'm going to start working down the side. Now as you can see it's going to be hard to see where your stitches need to go down the side. But what I like to do is I try to put two single crochets to every double crochet. And then there's that one row of single crochet where you'll need to put one single crochet. So we'll start. So here's the double crochet on the side. So what I kind of try to do is work two single crochets to that double and I kind of just dig in to where I kind of get in the middle of the double crochet on the side so there's one and there's two now the next row was a single crochet row right there so I'm going to go right in to the end there of that single crochet Now the next row was a double crochet row so you see this double crochet row I want to put two single crochets in the side of that double. So I'm just going to kind of wiggle through and try to evenly, what I'm doing is trying to evenly space out my single crochets the best that I can. And I do that by trying to work two single crochets to every double and then there'll be one single crochet at the end of that single crochet row. So that's what I'm going to kind of do all the way down. Now your, the amount of stitches you have when you get back around to the beginning is probably going to be di different than mine because, like I said, it's super hard to see the stitches. And the only thing you can do is just to do your best to try to evenly space them out. So there's really not a set number that you have to have when you get around here to the end. Just as long as you did your best to try to evenly space them out. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to work around, evenly spacing out my stitches. Like that. And it's not going to be perfect, and that's fine. It's homemade. Of course it's not going to be perfect. So go ahead and work one single crochet, evenly space them out, 
the best you can all the way down. And I'm going to meet you right here at this first corner. And we're going to go around that corner together. All right, I've made it up here to the corner. Now what we're going to do to round the corner, just so the wash rag lays a little bit uh, more flat on the corners, I'm just going to put three single crochet into that last corner stitch there. So there's one all in the same stitch, two, and then there's three. Now we're going to continue working along the bottom, and you'll probably be able to see the stitches pretty well now along the bottom side here, putting one single crochet in every stitch until I get to my next corner. And then when I get to my next corner, I'll put three single crochets into that. And then I'll continue up the opposite side, evenly spacing out my single crochet. So we're just going to be doing this the whole way around until we get back to our starting point. So it's just evenly spacing single crochets all the way around. But when you get to each of your corners, you want to put three single crochets in each of those. So I'm working across, putting one single crochet in every stitch. When I get to my corner, I'll put three single crochets. Helps it lay flat. And then I'm going to work, work back up the side, evenly spacing out my single crochets until I get up here to this top corner. Three single crochets, and then one single crochet in every stitch across the top. And then I'll meet you right back here at the beginning. Okay, I've made it back to my starting point. I got one stitch left, and I'm going to go ahead and put three single crochets into that last stitch, and then I'm going to end by slip stitching over here into my first single crochet that I made. Not the chain one, but the first single crochet. And I'm going to tie my yarn off, and I'm going to hide any remaining tails that I have. Okay, once you get all your tails in, what I like to do whenever I work with post stitches is kind of give it a little stretch out. Because post stitches, they kind of crumple up your work a little bit. But that's it. That's all there is to it. I think it turned out really nice. I'm sure my daughter will love to do dishes with it. <laughs> Not really. She hates doing dishes. But anyways, thanks everybody for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial and you like the way this uh, wash rag looks, um, I'd appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe. If you look over there on the right hand side, there's a link to some more videos that maybe you might enjoy if you since you like this one. Thanks everybody for watching and have a good day. Hi everybody, this is Crystal. So today I'm going to show you how to make this wash rag here. Now, this wash rag, you know, you can use it for many, many things. You can use it to wash dishes. This is what I made it for, for my kids. They're going to be very happy and to receive it as a gift, I'm sure. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. And then you can use it, you know, wipe off counters. Uh, or, you know, you can use it for your dishes or you can use it for cleaning. Uh, wiping off counters, cleaning the bathtub, you know, bathroom cleaning, kitchen cleaning. Uh, you can use it in the bathtub to wash your body. Whatever you really want to do with it, it's just it's it's just a wash rag, uh, dish towel, anything like uh, dish rag, something like that. So I'm gonna give you the measurements of it. So mine measures should be a square. I was hoping to get it a square. Um, about ten and a quarter. by about 10 and a quarter. That's about what mine measures. Awesome, turned out to be a square. One way to check if it's a nice square is to put it in a triangle form. Yes, it is. Can't believe it. Mine don't usually turn out square form. <laughs> but that's it, it's got some nice texture on it. Um, now this is intermediate pattern, only because of the stitches that I use. You have to know how to do, uh, you know, the regular stitches as, a uh, single crochet, double crochet, triple crochet, and then you're going to need to know front post double and back post double. Other than that, it's actually pretty pretty easy pattern to do. So what do you think? You want to go ahead and get started on it? This would be great as a gift in all different colors. Fold them up, um, stack them on top of each other, wrap a big bow around them. 
great gifts and great household use. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, for this project, I used Premier Home Cotton. Now this is an 85 cotton, a 15 polyester blend. Now when making things for the kitchen or wash rags or anything of the sort, you do not have to listen to me, but my recommendation is nothing less than an 85% cotton. That's my recommendation. I would never use anything less than 85% cotton for a kitchen item as a wash rag or even pot holders, uh, dish rags, anything like that. But that's just, that's my own personal opinion. But that's what that is. 100% cotton works well also, uh, probably better than, better than this one. But this works just fine too. Now there are 140 yards in this skein here, and this is what I have left, the one. So it's probably going to be like <clears throat> um, 120 yards to be safe, I'd say, to make that size of wash rag. Of course, you can always, I'll give you the multiple, and you can always change the dimensions. The color I have here is called lavender. Now remember, you do not have to use this yarn. Any four-weight cotton will work, four-weight yarn will work. I highly recommend at least 85% cotton. I mean, that's my recommendation. You don't have to listen, but that's just what I recommend if you're going to be using it for the purpose of washing things or the purpose of like a hot pad, set a hot plate on it or something. That would be my recommendation. And then I'm going to be using a size I, which is a five and a half millimeter crochet hook. All right. Now I'm going to show you on a smaller scale. Now you can make this if you want. I told you the measurements of mine. If you want to make yours bigger or smaller, you just need to have an odd number chain. Okay. But if you want to follow me, I started out with a chain of 35. So once you get your chain of 35 done, remember, I'm going to be showing you on a smaller scale, but once you get your chain of 35, we're going to do a double crochet in the fourth stitch from the hook. Now, remember, we don't count the one that's on our hook. So we count down four and we're going to go ahead and put a double crochet into it. And then we're going to work across and we're going to put one double crochet in every stitch until we get to the end of our row. Just like this. So one double every stitch until we get to the end of row one. Okay, once you make it to the end of row one, you should have a total of 33 stitches following along with me. And that counts this little guy here on the end. This little chain, he counts as a stitch. So counting him, you should have a total of 33 stitches now. Now we're going to start the repeat rows. The repeat rows are two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So it's a six row repeat, but they're not hard. So we're going to start row two by chaining one and turning our work. Now we're gonna start off and we're gonna put a double crochet right here into this very first stitch. Just like that. And now we're going to do a back post double crochet into the next stitch. So we're gonna yarn over and we're gonna go around the post of the next stitch, but we're gonna go from behind like that. So now the post of our stitch, or the post of the stitch is on the back of our hook. And then we go ahead and do a regular double crochet like that. So that's the back post double crochet. And now we're gonna do just a regular double crochet into the top of the next stitch. And then a back post double crochet around the next stitch. So go around the post of the next stitch from the back side like that. And then double crochet into regular double crochet into the top of the next. So that's the repeat now for row two. Back post double crochet into the next stitch. And then double crochet into the top of the next. Back post double into the next. 
and then regular double just right here into the top of the neck. So we're going to go ahead and read that, repeat that pattern. Back post, double crochet, regular double, back post, regular double, all the way until we get to the end of row two. Okay, I'm coming to the end of row two, and I just did a back post double crochet, and I got one stitch left here. Go ahead and put a double crochet into that last stitch. And you still should have 33 stitches. You'll always have 33 stitches for the rest, every at the end of every row for the rest of uh, the, the wash rag. That's the magic number. So now we're going to start row three by chaining one and turning our work. Now this is actually the front side of our work because if you look, you can see the posts are visible on the front side now. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put a double crochet into that very, very first stitch there. And now we're going to work a front post double crochet into the next stitch. And you can see that it is the back post from the previous round or the previous row. So go ahead and yarn over and go around that post from the front. Like that. And then do your double crochet. Now the next stitch is going to be a double crochet into the top of the next stitch. And front post double crochet into the next. So we're just kind of keeping the posts lined up. Regular double crochet into the next. And front post double crochet into the next. Regular double crochet. And front post double crochet. So we're going to repeat that pattern of regular double, front post double. Regular double, front post double all the way until we get to the end of row three. All right, I'm coming to the end of row three. I just did my front post double crochet and we're gonna go in and by double crocheting into our last stitch. 33 stitches there still at the end of round three. So round four, we are going to chain one and turn our work. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to put a single crochet into that very, very first stitch this time. Single crochet. And then we're going to do a triple crochet into the next stitch. Like that. Single into the next stitch. And triple into the next. single into the next and triple into the next and that is what we're going to repeat now for row four we're going to repeat triple crochet single crochet triple crochet single crochet all the way until we get to the end of the row if you look around now we're on the back side by work if you turn it over to the front you can see it makes these little little bitty tiny poof stick out that just gives it a little bit of, of texture so go ahead and keep repeating that triple single triple single until we get to the end of row four all right i'm coming to the end of the row i did a triple crochet here and i have one stitch left i'm going to go ahead and single crochet into that last stitch 33 stitches still there at the end of row four now row five, we are going to chain one and turn. Now this is the front side of our work. What we're gonna do is we're gonna work one single crochet in every stitch across for row five. So we're gonna put one single crochet into the very, very first stitch. And then one single crochet in top on the top of the triple crochet. Sometimes you have to turn it up a little bit to see where it needs to go. One single crochet into the next single crochet right here in between the triples. One single crochet on top of the next triple. One single crochet into the next single. 
one single crochet on top of the next triple. So I'm just going to keep repeating this until I get to the end of the row. It's one single in every stitch. So we're putting one single crochet in every single crochet and in every triple crochet from the previous row until we get to the end. Alright, I've made it to the end. Single crochet there in that last stitch. 33 stitches there at the end of row 5. Now we're going to start row 6. We're going to chain 1 and turn. Row 6 is a repeat of row 4. So what we're going to do is single crochet into the very first stitch. And then we're going to triple crochet into the next. Single crochet into the next. And then triple crochet into the next. So for row six, we're just repeating what we did on row four, which is the single crochet, triple crochet, repeat until we get to the end of the row. So single crochet and triple crochet all the way to the end of row six. I'm coming to the end of row six. I just did a triple. I have one stitch left. I'm going to go in and by single crocheting into my last stitch. 33 stitches at the end of row six. Row seven is the last row of the repeat. So we're going to chain one and turn. And this is the front side of our work. The one with the most texture is the front side. We're going to start by putting a double crochet into the very first stitch. So row seven is just one double crochet in every stitch across. So I'll put a double crochet into the next triple crochet from the previous round. Double crochet in the single crochet here from the previous round. Double crochet into the triple crochet here from the previous round. Double crochet into the net 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 into that next single. Double crochet into the next triple. So I'm going to repeat this, putting one double crochet in every stitch until I make it to the end of the row. Alright, I've made it to the end of row 7, 33 stitches total, and that is the end of the repeat rows. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So we want to start row 8 by repeating row 2, which was a chain 1 and turn. And double crochet into the first stitch. And then we start by back post double crocheting into the next. So we're just going to keep repeating. And then it will be regular double crochet. And then back post double crochet. Rows 2 through 7 until you get to your desired length. Okay, I have went ahead and done a total of 21 rows. Of course, you can make yours as big or as small as you'd like. So right now, before I add the edging on, mine measures approximately 10 inches by 10 inches. That's what I thought it measured. Well, that's what I was going for, <laughs> a square. All right, so now what, we gonna want, what you wanna do, I didn't tie off after that last row. So I just did, I'm gonna go ahead and do, oops, double crochet there in that last stitch. I'm gonna go around it with a row of uh, single crochet just to clean up the edges. So here's the end of my last row. I just did that double crochet there in my last stitch. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna start working along this side here. So I'm going to chain one. Now, we're going to be working on the sides of these double crochets and the sides of these single crochets. So we're going to, going to do our best to try to evenly space out the single crochets the best that we can. So it doesn't, it's not really important how many you have here once you get back around. Just as long as you do your best to evenly space them out. So I kind of just work along. And just do my best to make them look like they're spaced out evenly. I guess, I guess that's that's about the best you can do. I kind of go in between the double crochets, the sides, kind of like on the sides of them here. 
So you just want to continue evenly spacing out your single crochets. We're just giving the edge a nice clean look. As you can see, mine is far from perfect, but it does look a lot cleaner there with that single crochet edge versus this kind of tattered edge here. So I'm going to work down this side and I'm going to meet back up with you here at the corner and we're going to go around the corner um, just a little bit different. So I'm going to continue down until I get to our first corner and that's where I'll meet back up with you. All right, I've made it up to the corner here. See right up here is a corner. I'm going to put three single crochets all into that corner stitch and that will help the corner lay kind of flat so it hopefully it doesn't stick up that much. And now I'm going to work along the bottom here, putting one single crochet in each stitch. You'll probably be able to see where the stitches need to go pretty well across the bottom because it was our first row. So one single in every stitch until you get to your next corner space. And when we get to the next corner space, we'll work three single crochets into it, just like we did over here. And then we'll continue working up the other side, equally spacing out our single crochets, one single crochet at a time, just doing your best to equally space them out. So across to the corner, put three in this corner, evenly space out your single crochets up this side, when you get up here to the top, three single crochets in the corner, and then one single crochet across the top edge here, and I will meet you right back here where we started putting the edge on. All right, I have made it all the way around back to my starting point. What I'm going to do is in the last stitch here that I made, the last stitch I made on the top, that last double crochet, not over here on the side, the last double crochet, I'm going to put three single crochets into it that last stitch so that'll round that corner and now we're going to end the edging row by slip stitching into our first single crochet not the chain one there but the first single crochet and then we can tie that off flip the yarn hide that tail and that makes i think that by putting that edge on it makes it look a lot cleaner looks pretty good so go ahead and hide your tail and after you do that you can be done unless you want to go around it again with another round of single crochet or something that's completely up to you but i'm going to go ahead and hide my tail i just flip it over I don't usually show myself hiding my tails, but some people ask me if I would, so I guess I will. Um, I usually just flip it over and kind of weave it through the stitches a few times. And then if you go back the other way, it should lock in place. I just basically just weave it until I feel like it's not going to come undone. But that's it. Once you get done hiding your tail, that's good enough. Um, flip off your yarn, clip on any remaining tails, which I already did, and you are finished. That's it. That's all there is to it. Got a nice uh, little wash rag. These make great gifts too. So, I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. It's got a lot, a lot of nice texture on it. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button, the subscribe button, click the bell, make it ring so you get all my notifications. If you look over there on the right hand side of the, of the screen, I'm going to put a playlist of all my videos. Now I have hundreds and hundreds of videos, most of them crochet tutorials. And then I have a lot of videos where I talk about yarn, yarn hauls, yarn shopping, yarn reviews if you like anything yarn my channel's the place for you so thanks everybody for watching have a good night hi everybody this is crystal so today i'm going to teach you how to make these very very easy 
uh, beginner wash rags. Now they make great gifts or just great for around the house. You know, you can use them to wash dishes. You can actually even use these as a hot pad. As a hot pad, you know, you take your pan from the oven and set it on there because they are made with a cotton yarn, which will not melt. Acrylic will melt. So you want to make sure that you do use cotton, which I'll go over the yarn here in just a second. Now this is made with the woven stitch. If you're a beginner, and you know how to do a single crochet in the chain in a chain you'll be able to make these beautiful wash rags and really you can whip them up in no time wash rags hot pads whatever you want to call it um, you can use it for multiple uses you can use it in the bathtub and wash your body with it but i'm going to give you a measure of mine now mine are extremely big um close to eight inches um by eight inches now i will tell you how to make it bigger if you want so let's go ahead i got two here and get started on it but you can see how that looks it's very very pretty very very easy here it is in a multicolored yarn stitch isn't quite as visible but it's still pretty nonetheless all right let's get started okay for this project i'm using big twist cotton big twist is from um, joann's it's a joann's that's their house brand you don't have to use this uh yarn right here but if you want for washcloths cotton is best now this is a 85 cotton 15 percent polyester blend which is fine um anything that dealing with heat or uh, water absorbency i always recommend nothing less than an 80 percent cotton so whether you have um 80 percent cotton or 100 percent cotton anything in between it would work just fine this is a four weight yarn medium weight number four and you're gonna need about probably uh, 70 65 70 yards per wash rag but if you want to make them bigger of course you'll need uh, more than that but there are 131 yards in this ball and then I'm going to be using a size I which is a five and a half millimeter crochet hook okay so this stitch is done and a multiple of two so any your chain amount if you want to make your wash rag bigger than mine can be made bigger just by making your chain longer in a multi, long as it's a multiple of two an, an, an even number so you want to go ahead and start off with a slip knot on your hook now for my size i chained 32 chains All right, once you get your 32 chains finished, what we're going to be doing is a single crochet in the second stitch from the hook. So we do not count the loop that's on our hook. So we count over one, two, go ahead and put a single crochet into that second stitch like that. And then we are going to chain one. We're gonna skip one chain and single crochet into the next. And that's kind of what we're going to repeat for row one. We're going to chain one, skip one, and single into the next. Chain one, skip one, single into the next. Chain one, skip one, single into the next. And you want to repeat this pattern until you get to the end of the row. So I'll meet back up with you when we are at the finish line. Chain one, skip one, single into the next. So just like that. Okay, when you make it to the end, you should end like, you should have, I did a single crochet here I chained one. I have two stitches left. Just go ahead and single crochet into your last stitch. Just like that. Now, if you count every stitch and every chain space, you'll have a total of 31. That's counting every stitch and every chain one space. So now we're going to start row two, which is the repeat row. 
for the entire war track. It's really easy. So we're going to chain one here. Now this chain one that we're getting ready to do is going to count as a stitch. So you don't want to make it a real tight chain one. I always pull up just a little bit and make it a looser chain one. So when I get back to it later, it's easy for me to go into and crochet into. So I'm going to turn my work. Now what I'm going to do is put a single crochet into the next chain one space. So right here is the first single crochet from the previous row. And we did that chain one, which is going to count as a stitch. Well, the next spot is a chain one. So we just go right through that space and single crochet. And then we're gonna chain one and we're gonna kind of repeat that. So we're gonna skip this single crochet here and we're going to go into the chain one space and single crochet. Chain one, skip the next single crochet and go into the chain one space. So right through the chain one space and single crochet, chain one. Again, skip the single crochet here and in the next chain one space, go right through it, single crochet, and chain one. And we're going to repeat this until we get to the end of row two. See this single crochet here? Skip it, go into the next chain one space, and single crochet, chain one, skip the single, single crochet into the next chain one space, chain one, and repeat. So that's what we're gonna do all the way until we get to the end of row two. All right, I've come to the end of row two. I single crocheted into the last chain space, and I'm gonna chain one. Now at the end here, we are gonna go ahead and put a single crochet into the last stitch. It's actually this little chain space from the beginning. We're just somewhere around here we're gonna put a single crochet just like like that 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 part's always hard to see and that'll end a row two now for the rest of the pattern it's just a repeat of row two so let's go ahead and start again we're gonna start row three and it's just gonna be a repeat of row two so we're gonna do chain one but kind of make it a little bit looser of a chain one so we can go into it again when we get get there and turn your work again we want to skip this very first single crochet and single crochet into the first chain one space and then we chain one skip the next single crochet which is right there and then we go in single crochet into the next chain one space chain one single crochet again into the next chain one space so you skip that next single crochet and single crochet into the chain one space then you chain one again skip the next single crochet and single crochet into the next chain one space sometimes you have to use your fingers dig and dig around to find the chain one spaces chain one after that single crochet skip the next single crochet and single crochet into the chain one space chain one again and repeat so we're going to go ahead and repeat this until we get to the end of the row three all right i've made it to the end of row three i single crocheted into my last chain one space and then i did a chain one out after that now we're going to single crochet into that chain one that we put on the end remember i said that we needed to leave it a little bit looser because we were going to act like that was a stitch so right there is the chain one you'll see it right there on the end and Go ahead and go into it and single crochet. That'll end row three. Now again, we're just going to keep repeating row two. So it's the same thing again for row four. Start out with a loose chain one and turn your work. And again, we skip this very, very first stitch here. And then the next spot, which is a chain one space, we are going to single crochet, chain one skip the next single crochet and work into the next chain space single crochet chain one skip the next single crochet work into this next chain space single crochet and chain one 
again you skip this single go into the next chain one space and you work a single crochet and a chain one so we're going to continue doing this until we get to the end of the row okay i'm coming to the end and again i single crocheted in my last chain one space and then i chained one and i'm going to end again by single crocheting into that chain one at the very end that we did on the previous row just like that so that's what i'm going to do i am going to continue repeating that same row row two that's what we've been repeating and it starts to look like that and you want to do this for as long as you want your piece to be for however many rows that you'd like okay so I have done a total of 26 rows and that's starting from the very first row now remember you can do more if you like maybe you want to make uh, not a dish towel but you know, or a, not a wash rag but maybe you want to make a, a dish towel or something you know you can make it like I said your chain bigger and make this longer but uh, I did do 26. Now don't tie off after you finish that. We're, we are going to edge it uh, to clean up these edges because if you're giving it as a gift, everybody wants a nice clean edge, even if you're using it for yourself at home. We want to make it nice and clean. So what we're going to do, I just ended there um, with my single crocheting in my last chain one on my 26th row. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go around the whole piece with single crochet and that's going to make it more uniform and look more uh clean and professional so i'm going to go ahead and chain one at the end of that 26 throw down now we're not going to count that as a stitch okay so we're going to pretend like that's not there what we're going to do is we're going to turn our work to the side and we're going to work down the side of our work so we're going to go back into that same stitch that we just single crocheted into and we're going to single crochet into it and now we're going to work our way down the side kind of just evenly spacing out single crochets it doesn't have to be perfect but try to get one at the end of every row or do the best that you can but like i said it's not going to be perfect just kind of evenly space them out as you can see that's kind of what i'm doing like right here into this row i kind of just put my hook in there and single crochet and then here i'll wiggle my the next stitch is i kind of wiggle my hook in between that single crochet and then i'll single crochet and then again at the next end of the next row i'll single crochet into the next row put one single crochet and we're going to do this all the way down this first side here and remember it does not need to be perfect there's no certain number of stitches that you need to have as long as you do your best to evenly space out your single crochets that's all you can do and that's that's how we do it we just do our best So I'm going to continue here until I get to uh, the bottom and then I'll show you what we're going to do on the corners because we're going to work those just a little bit different. I'm almost down there. I'll show you just how much cleaner that edge looks now look at that now that looks a lot cleaner doesn't it oh yeah that looks really professional very nice if you're a beginner you can make some this is gonna make it look really professional so now what we're going to do when we get to the last stitch of our row the last stitch of the row is actually the first stitch of this is the bottom where we started our very first row so we're going to go into the very first stitch and you can see there here is my beginning tail right here so there's the stitch that we need to go into and we're going to go ahead and go into that spot and we're going to work three single crochets 
all into that same spot. Now watch that, what that is going to do, three all into that same corner stitch. It's gonna help around the corner out a little bit so it doesn't flip, so the corners don't flip up. So there's three. Now I'm gonna work along the bottom and I'm going to put, again, single crochet evenly across the row. So since it's the bottom, you should be able to see pretty well where your stitches need to go. Um, just one in each stitch of the bottom chain. Or your best, again, just evenly spacing them out. Oops, messed up. I missed a stitch. Let's try that again. We all make mistakes. It's a tight stitch. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to continue working across the bottom here, which is actually our first row that we started with. Putting one single crochet in each stitch of that beginning chain or just evenly spacing out our single crochets until I get to my next corner and then I'll meet back up with you when we get there. Now see how nice that looks there around that corner and up the side? Very nice. Okay so I've made it uh, to the corner again and now what I'm going to do is work three single crochets in the corner. One in that last stitch. Two and three and then I'm going to start up the other side evenly spacing out my single crochets again one in every stitch just like we did on the other side just as best as you can get it to evenly space them out kind of at the end of each row it's not always easy but well it's easy but I mean it's not always easy to get it it's not going to be perfect so just do your best And as I mentioned before, the number of stitches you have now, doesn't, it doesn't matter anymore. I'm not even going to count mine. Because since we're evenly spacing our stitches out, yours might be different than mine, and that's okay. So I'm going to do this all the way up until we get to our next corner. Looking pretty good. All right, I've made it up here to the top. So this is the top of our work right here. And right here is where we started going around. So we have one last row to evenly space out our single crochets. So we're in the corner stitch here at the top. It's actually the first stitch of the row. We're going to put three single crochets. So there's one, two, and three and then we're going to work across the top of our piece now across the top of our piece i like to put a single crochet into the chain one and a single crochet into the single crochet so single crochet into the single crochet that and then there's the chain one space just single crochet into that and then on top of the single crochet and then, then into the chain one space. But again, you can just evenly space out your stitches if you're having a hard time seeing those stitches. We're just gonna evenly space them out until we get to the end. We're almost finished. This is a nice, quick and easy project. Very nice looking, huh? All right, so I've made it back to the end to where we started if you look this is where we started uh, doing our single crochet down the side so I have one stitch left and what I'm gonna do is work three single crochets into that stitch that will be the corner here and now we're going to end this by slip stitching into our first stitch over here on the side. We're not going to go into the chain one. Remember I said that does not count as a stitch. So we're going to go into the first stitch and slip stitch. 
go ahead and pull it through and then we can clip that yarn leave a little bit for a tail that we can hide so pull that through and then we're going to grab our yarn needle and go ahead and hide that tail so I'm going to go back through that stitch that I just went through that kind of evens that out now I'm going to flip my work over to the wrong side and I'm going to weave my tail in a few times so it doesn't come undone. If you go along weaving in like this and then if you go back the other way it won't it shouldn't come undone. And then you'll have this other tail in the beginning that you will need to weave in unless you hit it as you crocheted, which I did. You can see I crocheted around it as I went. So I'm going to go ahead and clip that and clip that. Now what we're going to do is kind of straighten out our, stretch it out just a bit, straighten out our rows. This looks really nice. I like it. I think that we did a good job. And that's it. So you can make as many of these as you want you know they make a great gift same size hopefully yes they look good so that's the end of this nice easy tutorial i hope that you were able to follow along okay um and i appreciate you watching my video if you enjoyed it please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of my tutorials. Um, also, hit that bell. That way you get notified when I put out a new video. I have hundreds of crochet tutorials. I mean, easy ones all the way to the advanced ones. Anything you could ever want to make, I have it already and probably multiples of it. Um, hundreds and hundreds of crochet tutorials. I also do lots of yarn talk. If you like to learn about yarn, I always try to keep everybody up to date on the new yarns, even new, new yarn stores and stuff like that so i do do unboxings of yarn and stuff like that now please don't forget to come follow me on instagram there's a link below in the um, description box where i do do different things on there than i do um on youtube maybe you could check me out there um but importantly don't forget to hit that subscribe button like button and thanks everybody for watching have a good day hi everybody this is crystal so today i'm going to show you how to make this horse rack here now I did mention, I'll mention at the end of the video, but I'm going to mention it here too. Now, wash racks are good for gifts, gifts, um, you know, make a set of them, give them to people. Um, they're good for, you know, washing dishes, washing the counters off, um, stuff like that. Uh, and then you can make separate ones for the bathroom where you can wash your face, uh, use them in the, in the shower to wash your body. Um, they're, they're good for that. Um, also... This particular one, I think, would work, work well for, like, a hot pad. Like, say you want to set a hot hot plate on it. I wouldn't use it as a as a pot holder to grab anything. But I think setting a hot, like, a hot, uh, you know, pot on it, I think it would work well for that. Now, in order for um, you, for it to properly, properly be used um, in all those purposes, you're going to need to use cotton yarn. Um, cotton works the best for kitchen items. Um, and for stuff that you're going to be placing on it hot. So this is done with the primrose stitch. It's very easy stitch. Um, I think a beginner can do it. This measure is approximately 11 inches by 11 inches. Once it's finished, you can make it bigger or smaller. I will give you the multiple, but I think it turned out nice. So for this project, I use Premier Home Cotton. Now Premier Home Cotton is 85 cotton, 15 polyester. If you're going to be using this as a kitchen item, I highly recommend you use nothing less than an 85% cotton. It, that's just my recommendation. You can use acrylic, it will turn out the same. It's just not gonna soak up the water as well. And if you use it for a hot plate, sometimes acrylic can melt. But 85 to 100% cotton would be my recommendation. Now there are 131 yards in this, and this is what I have less. So I think you're probably going to need about 115 yards to finish out um, 100 to 150, nah, 115 yards to make one uh, wash rag. 
Now this is a medium weight number four. You don't have to use this. You don't have to use this brand. Any medium weight number four um, yarn will work. But like I said, I wouldn't use, if you're using it for the purposes of, of its intention, I wouldn't use anything less than 85%. Uh, cotton, but I mean, but you can. That's just my re recommendation. And then I'm going to be using a size J, which is a six millimeter crochet hook. Okay, now the primrose stitch is done in a multiple of three plus one, which means your base chain needs to be divisible by three, and then you add one more to it. So following along with me, you want to start out with a chain of thirty-seven. So I'm gonna show you on a smaller scale. But once you get your chain of 37 done, what we're gonna do is single crochet in the second stitch from our hook. Now remember this one on our hook, we never count that one. So one, two, the second one over. And then we're gonna put one single crochet in every stitch for the length of our chain. Just like this. So row one is this one single crochet in every stitch until we get to the end of the row. All right, once you make it to the end of row one, you should have a total of 36 stitches now. Now we're gonna start row two by chaining one and turning our work. Now we're gonna work a half double crochet right here into this very first stitch. So we're gonna yarn over, go right into that very first one and work a half double crochet. Now we're going to be working directly into the next stitch. And what we're going to do into that is we are going to single crochet and then we're going to work a chain of two and we're going to go back into that same stitch and single crochet again. So in that stitch was a single crochet, a chain two, and a single crochet. Now we are going to start our repeat. We're gonna skip two, so skip, skip. And in the next stitch, we're gonna do the same thing. We're going to single crochet, chain two, and single crochet all into the same stitch. Again, skip two stitches, skip, skip, and into the next single, chain two and single and that's what i'm going to repeat until i get to the end of row two skip two skip skip and in the next single crochet chain two and single crochet so i'm going to repeat that until i make it to my last stitch all right, I've come to the end of row two. I just did that last stitch, or uh, single crochet, chain two, single crochet, and I have one stitch left. I'm going to half double crochet into that last stitch. That'll finish off row two, and you'll have 16 of these little uh, chain two spaces with the single crochets there. Okay, now we're gonna start row three. So rows three and four, are the repeat rows for the whole war track. So for row three, we are going to chain one and turn our work. Now we're gonna start off by putting a double crochet right here into this very first stitch. It's that half double crochet from the previous row. Double crochet into that. And now we're going to go into the chain two space of this next single crochet, chain two, single crochet. So into that chain two space, we're gonna work three double crochets into that spot, all into the same space. <clears throat> and that's what we're gonna repeat for row three. We're gonna jump to the next spot here. There's single crochet, chain two, single crochet 
in that chain two space you kind of kind of dig for it it's hard to find three double crochets right through that chain two space so there's one two and three and we're going to do it again so we're going to jump over here to our next single crochet chain two single crochet in that chain two space there we're going to work three double crochets so there's one two and three and this is what we're going to repeat for row three all the way until we get to the last spot here to the end of the row all right i have made it to the end i did my last three double crochets and then i have this half double here on the end from the previous row i'm going to go ahead and double crochet into the top of that half double that will end row three and you should have a total of 12 of these groups of three double crochets so now we're going to go ahead and start row four which is very similar to row two so we're going to chain one and turn our work so we're going to start by putting a half double crochet right here into this very first stitch half double that now we're going to work in the middle double crochet <clears throat> of this group of three so we're just going to skip this first one and we're going to go to the next one and we're going to work a single crochet a chain of two and then another single crochet into the same stitch and now that's going to kind of that's going to start the repeat so we'll be skipping these two stitches here and working into the middle of this next group of three and we're going to do the same thing we're going to single chain two and single all into the same stitch again we'll skip the two and then we'll be into the middle stitch of this group of three same thing single chain two and single and this is what we're going to repeat until we get to the end of the row single chain two single in the middle stitch of every group of three double crochets here across the row until we get over here to the end okay i've made it to the end so i'm going to go ahead and end by half double crocheting into the double crochet here at the end from the previous row half double and that's it you should have again 12 of these chain two spaces so that's what we're going to do we're going to keep repeating rows three and four so for row five i would chain one and turn i would double crochet into my very first stitch and then i would put three doubles in each of these chain two spaces all the way across now you want to repeat rows three and four until you get your piece as big as you'd like it to be you want to end on a double crochet row I did I'm going to work until I get a total of 19 rows remember you can make yours bigger if you want I'm gonna do 19 all right I'm finishing it up finishing up my last row here remember you can make yours however big you want all right i'll give you a quick measurement don't tie off here after this last round so I'll, i got my total rounds uh not rounds or rows i'm sorry of 19 now remember more more or less if you like but if you do do more make sure you end on the round of where the, the double crochet i keep saying round make sure you know what i mean round row make sure you end in the row of double crochet i'm gonna give you a quick measurement and then i'm gonna go around it the edges just to clean it up and make it look a little bit nicer you can leave it if you want still looks pretty good to me but it measures about 10 inches hopefully by 10 inches i always try to make them square oh pretty dang close so we're gonna say 10 by 10 give it a little stretch there now it's 10 by now it's 10 by 10. okay so we didn't tie off there after that last row 
what, we're, what I'm going to do is go around the whole uh, wash rag with a row of single crochet. Uh, and I'm going to be putting three single crochets in, in each of the four corners to help hold those down. Now, it's going to be kind of hard and difficult to see where your single crochets need to go. So I always say just use your best uh, effort you can in, in evenly spacing out the single crochets. The amount of crochets you have around the whole piece, it doesn't matter. As long as they're spaced out as evenly as you can get them. So I just finished and I did my last double crochet there in that last stitch. So I'm going to chain one and I'm going to be like working along this side here. So I'm going to evenly try to space out my single crochets. Kind of a rule of thumb I go by, I always try to say two single crochets to every double. That's what I kind of say, but I don't know. You just do it until you feel like your single crochets are just evenly getting evenly spaced out and your project's laying flat it's not bunching up on you if it's bunching up on you that means you know you're putting too many stitches so just kind of watch as you go kind of like this and remember you don't even have to do this if you, I'm just doing it to kind of add a neat edge but my children are just going to do Wash dishes with it, so I guess it really doesn't matter. But if you're giving it as a gift or something, you'd want to make it to look as nice as possible. I know my children always love the gifts of a good old wash rag, handmade by mom. That's a joke. They hate doing dishes. <laughs> they complain all the time. Okay, I'm going to continue that. See that? How it kind of just, I'm just kind of trying to space them as even, even as I can all the way down here until I get to this first corner. All right, I'm coming up to the first corner here. And what I'm going to do is put three single crochets into that corner stitch. All this does is help the corner lay flat. And now I'll be continuing across the bottom here, putting one single crochet in every stitch. You'll probably be able to see where the single crochets need to go a little bit better down here. But I'm just going to continue this process all the way around my whole war track until I get back to the beginning. One single crochet in every stitch, or just evenly spacing out my single crochets the best that I can. And then when I get to a corner, one, I'm going to put three single crochets in each corner. And then I'll continue around to keep con con continue around, keep putting one single crochet evenly spacing them out until I get back to my starting point. There we go. That's looking pretty good. Okay, I have made it all the way back to my starting point and I'm at my last stitch here. Sorry. That last uh, double crochet here on the end that we did of our last row. I'm going to go into that and I'm going to put three single crochets in it since it's the last stitch. And now I'm going to end by slip stitching into the first single crochet that we did over here on this side. So not the chain one, you can see it right here. Don't go into that, that, that doesn't count as anything. Go into the first single crochet. Let's slip stitch it. And then we can tie that off. I can't at the moment because somehow my scissors always disappear. But after that, that is it. That's all there is to it. Let's take a tape. Cleaned up the, let's take a measure with the tape. See how much it grew with. That looks good. I like that. That's a pretty wash, that's a pretty wash rack. Okay. See how much it grew by putting single crochets on it. Ew, 11, almost 11 inches. Oh, I hope the other side is almost 11. I sure like my wash rags to be square. <laughs> Ten and a half. Hey, it's close. But like I said, I'll stretch it a bit. Yes. 11 by 11. That's what we're going to call it. That's what we're going to call it. So I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. Uh, I think it turned out really nice. This would make a really nice, uh, like I said, wash, wash rag set. You can make like um, three of them and, you know, in different colors and fold them up and tie them up and make a nice little gift for somebody make them for yourself um they you know for the dishes even for the counter um wash your face with them you know if 
kit you got kitchen use ones and then bathroom use ones use the ones in the bathroom you know to wash your body wash your face and then the cleaning ones you you use to clean with but whatever um you want to do with it it would also probably make an all right a uh, hot pad to set your hot as long as you use cotton to set your uh hot plates on i wouldn't use it as a pot holder because it has some holes in it but i don't see why it wouldn't work as a hot pad but anyways i'll quit blabbing thanks everybody for watching remember don't forget to like subscribe hit the bell so you don't miss out on any of my tutorials or yarn talk Look over there on the right hand side, you're going to see a playlist of all my tutorials. Hundreds of them. Hundreds. Hopefully you find something else that you like and want to make. Thanks everybody. Have a good day. Hi everybody, this is Crystal. So today I'm going to show you how to make a set of washcloths. So here's one of them right here. There's the stitch there. It's actually really easy. Just a two row repeat. Makes a nice little texture there. Go ahead and give it a measure real quick for you. Let's see. 11 by 10 and a half. So that's how big they are. Of course, you can adjust the size if you like. So let's go ahead and get started on this. Okay, for this project, I am using... Um, sugar and cream it's a medium four weight 100 percent cotton the brown uh wash rag that you've seen is made out of peaches and cream it's also the same it's a medium weight um for 100 cotton the color i use dark taupe and coral of course you can use any colors that you wish um there are let's look at the yardage um Try right in front of me. 120 yards per skein. And one skein will be enough to do one wash rag. You won't have much left, but it'll be enough to do one, one um, wash rag. Um, now, if you don't have to use this yarn, you don't have to use this brand, but I strongly, strongly recommend that you use a 100% cotton medium four weight. I would not use acrylic. That's just my recommendation. Now, I think Premier Yarns has a cotton. It's like 85% cotton and 15% uh, polyester, maybe. 15% something else. That would be okay. But nothing below an 85% cotton for a dish rag. I mean, you, you can. I mean, I can't tell you what to do, but that's just my recommendations. So, if you can, try to get it 85% or 100 if if you can for um, for these. And I'm also going to be using a size I, which is a five and a half millimeter crochet hook. Now, as always, I'd like to just take one second to ask you not to forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my um, tutorials or anything. If you look in the lower right hand corner of the screen right now, you can just go ahead and click on that uh, little red subscribe button and you'll automatically be subscribed and you never have you'll never miss any of my tutorials or anything else that i put on also if you like these wash rags um you could give this video a thumbs up for me that'd be awesome so we're going to start out with the slip knot on our hook now if you don't like the size of my um wash rags you can make them bigger or smaller or you can use this stitch for something else um, this stitch is done in a multiple of two. So you can chain any number of chains that you want, as long as it's done in a multiple of two. You want to follow along with me um, in making the same size, uh, same size that I did. I started with a chain of 36. So we're going to go ahead and do our chain of 36. All right, once you get your chain of 36 done, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put a single crochet into the third stitch from our hook. Now, remember, we don't count this one that's on our hook, so we count over three, one, two, three, and in that third stitch, we're going to put a single crochet. And then we're going to work one single crochet in every single uh, stitch for the entire length of the chain.
just like that. All right, I have made it to the end of row one. Now you should have a total of 35 stitches and that is counting this little chain here on the end. It's really tiny, but this counts as a stitch. So you would count that as one, two, three, four, and so on. And you should have 35. So rows two and three are the repeat rows for the entire uh, wash rack. So what we're going to do for row two is we're going to chain two. Now that chain two is going to count as a half double crochet. Now we're going to work a special kind of cluster stitch. And I'll show you how we do that. Okay, so we're going to yarn over. We're going to go into the very same, very, very, very first stitch right here. This very first one. And we're going to draw up a loop. And then we're going to yarn over and go through the first two loops that are on our hook. Now we're going to skip the next stitch. And in the next stitch, we're going to yarn over. So remember, we're skipping this one. And then the next one, we're going to go in and draw up a loop. We're going to yarn over and go into the same stitch again and draw up a loop. You will have six loops on your hook right now. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to yarn over and go through all six like that. We're going to chain one and we're going to do the cluster again. And we're going to start this, the, the very first stitch that we're going to start our cluster in is the same stitch that we just ended the cluster in. So what we're going to yarn over, go into this same stitch that we just ended that cluster in and draw up a loop. Yarn over and go through the first two loops on your hook. Now we're gonna skip one stitch and yarn over, skip that one and go into the next stitch and draw up a loop. We're gonna yarn over again and go into that same stitch and draw up a loop. Six loops on your hook yarn over and go through all six and then chain one like that and we're going to do it again so we're going to yarn over go into that same stitch that we did our last cluster in draw up a loop yarn over and go through the first two loops on our hook skip one stitch yarn over and go into the next stitch draw up a loop, yarn over again, draw up a loop in the same stitch, six loops on our hook, yarn over, go through all six, chain one. And that's what we're going to repeat the whole way across to the end of the row. So again, we are going to, you do our cluster, we're going to yarn over, go into the same stitch as our last cluster and draw up a loop and we're going to yarn over and go through the first two loops on our hook we're going to yarn over and skip one stitch and go into the next and draw up a loop yarn over go into the same stitch and draw up another loop six loops on our hook yarn over and go through all six loops chain one just like that so I'm going to repeat that to the end of the row I'll go ahead and do it one more time yarn over go into that same stitch and you draw up a loop and you yarn over and go through those first two loops now we're gonna skip one we're gonna yarn over and go into the next stitch draw up a loop Yarn over and go into the same stitch again and draw up another loop. Six loops on your hook. Yarn over, go through all six and chain one. So I'm going to repeat that all the way until the end. All right, I'm coming to the end of round two and I'm going to show you how we end it. We have two stitches left. I just finished this cluster here and I chained one and you should have two stitches left there. Counting that little chain there on the end. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to do another cluster. So we're going to yarn over and go into that same stitch as that last cluster and draw up a loop and yarn over and go through the first two loops. Now we're going to be working in the last stitch, which is actually this chain here. We're going to yarn over, go into it, draw up a loop, yarn over, go into it again, draw up a loop. Six loops on your hook, just like your regular cluster, yarn over and go through all six. Do not chain one here at the end. Go ahead and just yarn over, go directly into that same last stitch again and do a half double crochet. Just like that. So the only difference there on that last cluster is you don't chain one. So we'll go ahead and look and see what we got. If you count what you have, you'll have one half cluster on this end and one half cluster on this end and you'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen full clusters. And then the t the, these two half ones on the end. And that will complete row two. So row three is we're going to chain one and turn our work. We're going to put a single crochet right back into this very first stitch. And then we're going to put one single crochet in every stitch across. So we'll go into the next stitch and single crochet. And the next one and single. So it's just one single in every stitch. Some of them might seem a little tight, like right there, but still got to go into it there. Make sure you get every stitch so your stitch count comes out correctly. So I'm going into the top of every cluster. In into that uh, chain one. And I'm going to do this until I get to the end of row three. Okay, when you make it to the end here of row three, your last single crochet is going to go into the top of this chain two here that we did on the previous row. So just go right into the top of it, single crochet, and that'll be your last one. And now you'll have a total of 35 single crochets. You're going to have the same amount we, that you started with on row one. So we're just going to repeat rows two and three till we get our project as tall as we want it to be. So for a row four, we're going to repeat row two. We're going to chain two, which counts as a double crochet, and turn our work. And then we work our cluster. So we yarn over and go into this very, very first stitch, drop a loop, and yarn over and go through the first two loops. Then we're going to skip one stitch and yarn over and go into the next stitch, drop a loop, yarn over, go into the same stitch again, drop a loop, six loops on your hook, yarn over and go through all six and chain one. Again, we're going to yarn over, go into that same stitch as the last cluster, draw up a loop, yarn over, go through the first two loops. Then we're going to yarn over, skip one stitch, and into the next stitch, we're going to go in and draw up a loop, yarn over, go into the same stitch again, draw up a loop, six loops on your hook, yarn over and go through all six, and chain one. So now we're just repeating row two. All right, I'm coming to the end of row four and I'm just gonna show you how to end it. Remember, this is just a repeat of row two. So I just did my last cluster and I chained one and I have two stitches left. I'm gonna go ahead and do a cluster. So I'm gonna yarn over and go into the same stitch as my last cluster, drop a loop, yarn over, go through the first two. 
I'm going to yarn over and skip one and go into this last stitch, drop a loop, yarn over, go in again, drop a loop, six loops on your hook, yarn over, go through all six, do not chain one at the end of this row, remember? You just go ahead and yarn over, go into the same stitch again, and do a half double crochet. And that's how you end it. And then we're just going to chain one and turn, and we're going to repeat what we did for row three, which was just the single crochet row. Remember, we just chained one, turned, single crochet in the first stitch, and then every stitch all the way across. Just like that. If you flip it over, actually this is the right side of the work. Show you on the brown, you can see it a little better. This is what the right side looks like. It's got the little, I think it's a little lines going down it. And this is the wrong side, but if you ask me, either way, it's pretty. I like either side actually. So I guess either way you can make the right or wrong, but I think technically this is the right side where the it's got the lines going down it but whatever you prefer it's your wash rag so we're going to keep repeating rows two and three for a total of 22 rows if you're following me you can definitely make it any size you want but i did 22. so i'm going to go ahead and finish up my 22 rows on this piece and i'll meet back up with you after that and we'll go around and we'll clean up all the edges on it so 20 uh, repeat rows two and three for a total of 22 rows. All right, I just finished my 22nd row and you should, the 22nd row should have been a um, cluster stitch row. So what we're gonna do is edge the whole thing now, clean, them all, clean up all these edges and make it look nice. So we're gonna chain one and turn our work. So now we're on the front side of our work, which I said the front side kind of has these little lines of or little pieces of the yarn going straight down if you can kind of see it so we're going to start off by working three single crochets into the very first stitch it's like this is going to be one of the four corners that we work three single crochets in that just helps it to lay flat now we're going to continue by working one single crochet in every stitch until we get to our next corner all right I've made it across the top here now I'm at the end of the row and I'm at um, this uh, chain two here from the previous row it, we're gonna it's gonna act as the corner stitch so we're gonna go right into the top of it and we're gonna work three single crochets like that now we're gonna go along this side here now as you can see it's gonna be pretty hard to see where your stitches need to go so all that I ask is that you do your best to evenly spaced out Want your single crochets all the way down so I just kind of try to evenly space them out the best that I can kind of at the end of every row if I can if not you know I just, just do the best you can that's all you can do you just do the best you can and you can't do any more but it's still gonna look great so I just work down evenly spacing out one single crochet all the way down trying just to kind of I don't know it's, it's a little hard I guess but just do the best you can just kind of just putting it at the end of the row I guess like that and you want to do this all the way down until you get to your to your next corner 
Okay, I've made it to my next corner, which is right here, kind of where we started. You see, this is your beginning string. So I'm going to go into that stitch and work three single crochets to round that corner. Three singles into the same stitch. And now I'm going to be working across the bottom, putting one single crochet in every stitch. And you should be able to see the stitches pretty well here along the bottom of the piece. And I'm going to do this until I get to the next corner. Okay, I've made it all the way across the bottom and I'm at my corner again. So I'm going to go ahead and put three single crochets into this last corner. Now you're going to be working on the side again and it's going to be really hard to see where you need to put your single crochets. And again, just do your best to kind of evenly space them out. I kind of grab a little bit on the end of that cluster. And then right here, I believe is the next single crochet row then the end of the cluster the next single crochet row it's hard I mean like I said this is hard to see but you'll get it so I'm gonna work this evenly space out one single crochet and every stitch up this last side here until I get to where we started. Okay, I've made it back to where I started. You can see here's where I put my three single crochets there in that first stitch. Now I'm going to go ahead and end by slip stitching into my first single crochet that I made. Not the chain one, but the first single. Slip stitch into that. And I'm going to clip my yarn off and hide that tail. And that is what it looks like. Nice clean edges now. That single crochet row really helps to clean it up. Once you get this towel hidden though, that is it. That's all there is to it. Pretty easy. Let's go ahead and weave your tail through the back. I'm going to go ahead and finish weaving in this tail real quick. All right, that's it. Now that on that final row of um, edging, now your stitches will, the amount of stitches you have at the end will probably be different than mine because remember, we just evenly spaced out the best that we could. So we're probably not going to have the same amount, but that's just fine. As long as you, um, it's all evenly spaced and looking good. Um, if you're doing the edging and it starts to feel like it's, uh, I don't know stretching or bum 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 up like that that means you don't have enough stitches so as long as it's laying flat and just like that that means you did good so that's it that's all there is to it i hope you enjoyed my tutorial please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel this is all the yarn i have left out of that so just enough to make one one more shag um, like I said, if, uh, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook. I'll put a link below in the description box where you can get to check out all my other tutorials. I have hundreds of them. And also, please don't forget to give this video a like. And if you look in the upper left-hand corner right now of the screen, you'll see a picture of my face. If you click on that face, you'll automatically be subscribed and you'll never miss any of my updates. So until next time, thanks everybody. Have a good night.